Hi, I'm Mike Owner of the Ingroup in Phoenix, Arizona. Today I'm doing the new arrival video for July 21st, 2023. So uh, actually one of the best pre-order lineups I've had in quite some time. Things I found interesting anyways. But I guess I'll start right there. Go over with uh, go over the pre-orders with you. New arrivals. I also got a really good uh, restock. Kind of small, but some really solid titles that we've been waiting on for a long time. Uh, big Analog Productions restock. But uh, let's start with the pre-orders. I'm going to start with the doors. They're releasing the complete matrix. The matrix is one of the earliest known recordings of the doors before even their first album was successful. I mean, it's one of those records that it's a live recording. It's come out in dribs and drabs. First, they came out with it on CD as the official release from the master tape. Turns out it wasn't the master tape. It was like a third generation copy. Then they finally secured the rights. They own the tape now. Then they started releasing it for record store days, day and like little dribs and drabs. Now we're finally getting the full release. It is a 5LP and a 7-inch box set of everything that was recorded at the Matrix. It's kind of a cool concert in the way that they like play Light My Fire and you know they get like the the golfer clap at the end, you know, kind of just like the smattering of claps. And six months after that, when they started doing live shows, you know, that first note on Light My Fire, the crowd goes nuts. But on this, it's the golfer clap. Uh it's kind of a cool show. I really dig it. And I like the fact that it's going to be all in one in the little box set. Uh, I myself am going to get it and offload all those record store day 10 inches. So I'm looking forward to that. That comes out September 8th. Here's a record that is kind of interesting. This is uh, Marilyn Manson's Mechanical Animals, a record that goes for like ridiculous amounts of money. Like a lot of his titles that haven't come out in a while. Antichrist Superstar, for instance. Personally love Marilyn Manson. He was a big, you know, musically, he was a big part of my childhood in the 90s. Uh, this is a record that should be in print. What's interesting about this, though, is it looks like it's not getting a U.S. pressing. And a lot of people are like, eh, you know, that might just be the current climate in the U.S. They're not going to reissue it, which I thought about it. I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. But on August 11th, we're getting a import reissue of Marilyn Manson's Mechanical Animals, but because it's an import, it is not cheap. But it is available on the website for pre-order. Okay. This is a record that is extremely popular in Arizona. I'm wondering how it'll go, you know, when I do pre-orders countrywide, but this is Linda Ronstadt's Spanish album. Very difficult record of hers to find. Arizona, I, I get asked about it all the time. That's uh, Conchones de Mi Padre. I'm sure I said that 100% accurate, so quote me on it. That is, uh, yeah, it came out, what, late 80s, maybe 90, 80, 89, 90? But uh, very desirable. I uh, know I'm going to do quite well with it here locally. The next two tone poets, Wayne Shorter, Schizophrenia, and uh, Big John Patton, Let Him Roll, two fantastic tone poets. Looking forward to both of them, especially the Big John Patton. I'm glad they're getting around. I've always loved Big John Patton. I'm glad they're getting around to doing them between the Tone Poets and the Classic Series. Those come out September 1st. And the next two, Verb by Request. This is uh, labeled as made from the best source possible. Ryan Smith does a lot of the mastering. But we've got Sunrise, Space is the Place, and Albert Eiler's A Love Cry. Both of those come out September 8th. So, kind of a couple of points here. If you have purchased something from me recently, UPS, or you purchase something on the website now, UPS, for the next couple of weeks anyways, I'm going to switch everybody to priority mail shipping. It seems like UPS is going to go on strike. All of my manu all, all distributors and most of the distributors I've talked to have already started switching to FedEx. Uh, I don't know how well that's going to go because if they do go on strike, Somebody told me that UPS represents six of the U.S. six six percent of the U.S.'s GDP. I'd imagine the government's going to come in and stop that uh, strike. You know, uh, kind of like the airline traffic controllers in the '80s. I feel like that is going to happen because if everybody switches to FedEx, FedEx is not going to be able to handle it. Uh, they can't handle you know that amount of <laughs> influx of packages into their system. I think most of the stuff will go from UPS to FedEx. I don't think it'll go UPS to the post office. But I actually prefer shipping records via the post office. I know there's problems with everybody. But the thing is, the post office is 
typically carrying smaller packages. They're not a package delivery company per se. They're letter carriers, and now, you know, in the last 20 years since the internet, they started carrying a lot more packages, but they tend to be smaller, lighter packages. So I have always had the least amount of damage with uh, the Postal Service. The least amount, not no damages, not damage free, but the least amount of damages with the post office and uh, the least amount of problems. I think all in all, if this strike does happen, the post office is going to be the safest bet. So domestically, everything is going to go out uh, USPS until we know more. Also, the international shipping that we've started three weeks ago has been fantastic. I've gotten tons of praise how... It's one of the cheapest shipping options worldwide. It's one of the fastest shipping options worldwide. It's all-inclusive. Everybody I've talked to, again, I'll say it up to this point, who's purchased from this, it's all up front on the website. All of the taxes, everything is all on the website so you know exactly what you are getting into ahead of time, and you don't have anything at your country of origin. So when it gets to you, it just gets delivered. You don't have to go to the... Uh, you know, the tax man, get them paid before your package is delivered. So that has been very popular. Check out the international shipping option. Just go in. Three to four items is about the sweet spot. Put them in your cart, and you'll know exactly what it's going to cost to get the record shipped to you, and it's actually in your currency as well. So easy to shop because if you're shopping in euros or pounds or Canadian dollars, Australian dollars, you know exactly what it's going to cost because the website will be in your currency. Okay, I laughed when I saw this. This is a CD that when it comes into the store, I throw it away because it is like one of the most worthless CDs at this point of all time because they made so many of them. It kind of was in that point where they weren't really making vinyl anymore. There wasn't the internet to download stuff. Everything was on CD, and that is Hootie in the Blowfish. This is a Cracked Rear View. This was their big album. Sold many, many, many copies. But it's not something that is easily found on vinyl, right? This has their big hits on it. Uh, Only Want to Be With You and Let Her Cry and Hold My Hand. So this was uh, for Rhino's 75th anniversary, or excuse me, Atlantic's 75th anniversary they put this out. But yeah, this has uh, been selling really well. It's on crystal clear vinyl. Nina Simone, You've Got to Learn, newly discovered historic concert. So we've got one of them. This is the black vinyl version. And I think one of these is a different uh, color. One of these is an indie exclusive, this one. I'm not sure what color it is, but different barcode. It'll tell you on the website. The next two titles, you know, well, maybe the next one title in the contemporary series. I don't know if the other one got pushed off maybe a week. I think it might have. But this is uh, something else. Ornette Coleman, all analog, cut by Bernie Grunman using the tip-on. Is it a Stoughton jacket? Doesn't stay, but it's a Stoughton-type jacket. All analog, cut by Kevin Gray, pressed, excuse me, cut by Bernie Grunman, pressed at QRP. All of the contemporary stuff is going to be uh, pressed by uh, Bernie Grunman. The next two Blue Note classic titles, all analog, cut by Kevin Gray. This is Lonnie Smith's Turning Point. Gatefold on this one. Lee Morgan's on this. Melvin Sparks guitar. Lonnie Smith plays organs, of course. Uh, Leo Morris on drums. And Ike Quebec's Heavy Soul, another all-analog Blue Note Classic Series title. A lot of good jazz this week. This is pretty highly anticipated, I would say. This is the next uh, Greta Van Fleet album. This is Star... Star Catcher. Really cool, almost like a plastic sparkle cover. This is the Milky Clear Translucent Glitter Colored Vinyl. And then we have the standard black vinyl. I'm guessing the other one is the Indie Store Exclusive, but it's a pretty well, looks like a nice cover. Almost like a plasticky feel. These came at the end of last week. I haven't been able to show them. This is uh, REM's Around the Sun. And REM's Collapse Into Now. Both very difficult albums to get, kind of uh, in that dark era for vinyl. I believe, according to Canada, these are also all analog. Mastered by Kurt Bernie Grumman from the original Master Tapes. Uh, that's what the 
top guy, I think, that handles this at Candid Said in an interview. Doesn't say it on the hype sticker, but that's what he said anyways. But, uh, yeah, Steve Lacey, the straight horn of. We also have Mingus's, Charles Mingus Mingus, also uh, remastered by Bernie Grunman. And the third title is Don Ellis's uh, How Time Passes. Ron Carter is on bass. Man, a very young Ron Carter. Jackie Bard on piano and alto sax. Interesting. The new soundtrack to Barbie. This is Barbie the album featuring brand new songs from Billie Eilish, Lizzo, Dua Lipa, Nicki Minaj, Sam Smith, Tame Impala, and more. Oh, yeah, look at uh, Margie. Mar right on the cover there. Yeah, hot pink vinyl. This will be popular. Checking out the back here. Might end up having to go see that with uh, my wife. She's like, you never go to see the movies I want to see. I'm like, okay, let's go to a movie you want to see. What do you want to see? She's like, Barbie the movie. I agree to that. Brian May and Friends. This is the Starfleet Sessions. This is a LPCD 7-inch book box set. Bella White. Among other things. John Mellencamp's Orpheus Descending. We've got Masego, self-titled by Masego, with like a uh, little obi there. Montel Fish, Jamie. We've got Hayden, Are We Good? Hayden's ninth full-length studio album. Kind of a linen cover. The Vandals, Hitler Bad, Vandals Good. This is a blue-white splattered vinyl from Kraft. Another release by Kraft, we've got Finger Elevens, Greatest Hits Together for the First Time. This is on uh, Yellow Marble Indie Store Exclusive Vinyl with kind of a cutout cover there. 40th anniversary of Ultravox's Quartet, Deluxe Edition, Half Speed Master, bonus vinyl of single edits and B-sides, so two LP set. Death Cab for Cutie, Narrow Stairs, Sleater Kenny, Dig Me In and Dig Me Out, the covers album. All right, so it uh, looks like other folks doing covers of their tunes. St. Vincent, Wilco, Margot Price, Self-Esteem, Courtney Barnett. I think I showed this. Did I show this, Jackson Brown? Actually, this might be a color variant, it looks like. Running on empty. Re you know, I wouldn't say repress, but it's in print now. Guided by Voices. Wells Pool Fullies. Wells Pool Frillis. West Pool Frillis. This is a restock of the Love Potion vinyl variant of Taylor Swift's Midnight. I think this was a website exclusive for her that maybe they only had on there for a couple days, and then I think they sent the rest to indie stores. So if you didn't get it there, you can get it here. The Dam. Fiendish Shadows on double blue vinyl. Blur, The Ballad of Darren. I think there's two versions of this. I might have an indie, indie version of this somewhere in here. Johnny Winter's Guitar Singer, Slinger, excuse me. Seeing a lot of represses of albums that were once common, but, you know, they're not anymore. 
the original motion picture soundtrack track to Trolls. Gwen Stefani, Ariana Grande, Justin Timberlake. They're getting kind of smart with these soundtracks, like the Barbie soundtrack, because they're getting new music put on. You know, in the old days, they would just grab a bunch of music, throw them on a soundtrack, but they're doing a lot of, like, uh, originals, and they do that with, you know, all of the current big-time artists. Billie Eilish, Dua Lipa. Uh, and because of that, they end up selling really well. This is the Aggression Sessions on gray and brown swirl with black splatter vinyl, limited to 3500 But a lot of times when they do that, they don't actually release them as a vinyl LP. So it's kind of cool. You know, you're, you're going to find all the completionists that want to buy something like that. Bar. You know, all the Billie Eilish fans or all the Dua Lipa fans. They're going to have to own it for that one song. Molly Tuttle, City of Gold. Dexter Gordon, Walk the Blues. This is from ORG, Org Music. Recorded 1967, pressed at Palace in Germany. This is the transparent blue vinyl version. Jim Croce, Life and Times, 50th anniversary on blue vinyl. Speaking of a record that you used to be able to find everywhere, the Jim Croce stuff doesn't stick around much anymore. It's not typically clean when you find it, you know, especially this album with the Bad Bad Leroy Brown, but you know, it makes sense to get nice, clean versions of this in print to where people can buy it. Because a lot of people, you know, some people just want to buy records of listed music. They don't want to go to record stores 14 times a week digging for stuff. I mean, I want to do that, but not everybody wants to do that. The Temptations Sing Smokey. This is on Elemental. I have not heard any of these, but I have heard uh, good things. Same record twice. Okay. B.B. King. Indianola, Mississippi Seeds. This is also on Elemental. Joan Jett. We've got Up Your Alley. Yeah, there's the uh, indie exclusive of The Ballad of Dare, and this is on blue colored vinyl. Fish is Fuego. Let's see, Master by Bernie Grunman, oh, excuse me, Lacquer's Cut by Chris Bellman at Bernie Grunman Mastering uh, on Spontaneous Combustion Flame Colored Vinyl. Okay, Spontaneous Combustion Colored Vinyl. This is a restock of a record that I haven't had in a while, but everybody wants it, and that is uh, the Gorilla's uh, Jeep, I guess we'll call this Jeep, self-titled, everybody calls it Jeep. We've got Devo, Freedom of Choice. This is a limited edition white vinyl variant. Love Devo. One of those bands I, I need to see live, and I haven't seen them live. I've got a beautiful, like, uh, I got it on Blondie's website a while back, but it's signed by Debbie Harry and Devo, maybe about 10 years ago. I think they did it. I think I got it five or six years ago, but pretty cool. Nice. It's hanging up in my hallway, and every time I pass it, I'm like, man, I need to see Devo. Actually, and Blondie, two bands I absolutely love. Return of Dark Side of the Moon, a tribute to Pink Floyd, which I always love these like uh, Pink Floyd tribute albums. I'm a big fan of them. Robbie Krieger of The Doors, guitar player, does time on this. Tommy Shaw, Steve Howe, Rick Wakeman, Dweezil Zappa, Scotty Page. This could be quite good. I'm going to give it a listen to. Death Cab for Cutie. Let's see, this is Transatlanticism. I don't know if this is just a repress or a different variant of the record. I think it's just a repress back in stock. We've got Underground Techno. Looks like a techno comp, 2LP techno comp, and we got Underground House. That is a two, maybe a two, yeah, 2LP two techno comp. Back in stock from my top 100 imprint analog records you should own list and one of the ones that I would put on the top and also the shootout winner. I did a shootout of this a couple years ago. This is Fleetwood Mac's Rumors. I know you've heard it 10,000 times, but when you hear this version, you're like, holy crap, I never heard it sound like that before. This is mastered by Kevin Gray and Steve Hoffman. 
There was a point in time for about two years where this was not in print and was like a $300 record. So that time will come again, but uh, you can nip it in the bud by just buying it now because it's just, it, it's always going to be in demand. It's rumors. It's like rumors, Dark Side of the Moon, Abbey Road. I just sell nonstop. They just, it doesn't matter. You know, back up the truck, bring me some more copies of Abbey Road. They just sell really, really well. Klaus Nomi, Encore. I love Klaus Nomi. So if you want to laugh, I think it's fantastic. But if you want to laugh, go watch uh, Klaus Nomi do uh, Total Eclipse. I think it's fantastic. David Bowie was a big fan. He thought he was fantastic. They did a song, uh, what did they do? Uh, they did on Saturday Night Live, but I forget the song they did. But it was fantastic. But uh, this is Encore. Uh, Nomi's Best. Yeah. So Total Eclipse is on this. So this is the greatest. Klaus Nomi, greatest hits. Big in Germany. Almost nobody in the U.S. knows who he is. I play it in the uh, store quite frequently. Gets a rise out of some folks. Actually, it's one of those odd things that I like that Angel loves as well. It's kind of rock opera. And you'll know what I'm talking about when you listen to Total Eclipse. John Lee Hooker. Seven Nights. Muddy Waters. Brass and the Blues. These are official releases. Uh, this one by Elemental. They have tons of these types of records floating out there with all this, you know, all the crappy Spanish bootleg labels. I don't bring them in, but those are official releases. Marlion, Season End, 2023 mix. 2023 a remix. Spoon. New pressing, I'm guessing. Uh, they Want My Soul. This is on Baby Blue Vinyl. The Capital Aerosmiths are still coming out, remastered from the original source tapes. This is Rocks. Spectacular new masterpiece. What is this? This is a new record by Sparks. 2023, yeah, brand new record by Sparks. The girl is crying in her latte. Actually, I saw the video on this. I thought it was pretty good. There's a music video on this, and... Uh, Watch the music video. It's, it's interesting. Ice Spice Like. It's a cartoon, so I shouldn't be able to get, you know, probably should get in trouble. You never know. <laughs> Jimmy Buffett. Songs you know by heart. Jimmy Buffett's greatest hits. It's comical, but you know, I'm glad to have this, man. This will sell. Jimmy Buffett's records are typically whipped. All analog, all original analog tapes transferred to JVC Digital, compiled and mastered by Glenn Meadows at Master Phonics using the JVC Digital Audio Mastering System. Okay. Mingus, the Black Saint, and the Sinner Lady. This is the uh, vital vinyl version. It's a lower price version. Uh, I wouldn't buy this personally. I would get the uh, Verve series, all analog by a cut by Ryan Smith version. That's the one you want, but there's the other option for less money. Uh, Billie Eilish's Don't Smile At Me, her first release. This is an EP. Actually, uh, this one sells quite well still. Okay, some cool Tone Poet restocks. All analog, cut by the man himself, Kevin Gray, from the original Master Tapes. We got Lee Morgan's, The Raja. These are tone poets that have not been around for quite some time. Sonny Clark's My Conception. Art Blakey, Witch Doctor. Fantastic release. This was out for quite some time. It was like a $100 bill a month ago. Restock of the all analog Blue Note classic, Lee Morgan's The Sidewinder. Hank Mobley's Soul Station, kind of a, you know, classic top 10 jazz album, probably a top 10 jazz album, it's fantastic, it's up there, Grant Green's Idle Moments, Lee Morgan definitely is, but Grant Green's Born to be Blue, another tone poet that was out of print for quite a while that everybody wanted, Dexter Gordon, uh, Swingin' Affair, 
Oh, I should have showed this last week. This is Pharaoh Sanders' Black Unity. This is a uh, verb by request title. Came out, I want to say, last week. Here's a restock of an album that never seems to stick around long. This is uh, Live's Throwing Copper, 25th anniversary edition with three new bonus songs. Actually, fantastic record, I think. We've got another top 10 jazz release, Cannonball Adderley's Something Else with Miles Davis. Boy, I think we've got half of the 10 greatest jazz albums of all time in this uh, restock. John Coltrane's A Love Supreme, All Analog by Ryan Smith. Stanley Turrentine, Coming Your Way. And Lee Morgan's The Cooker. This is the second to last one everybody was waiting on next to Chet Baker's Sings, which I actually have coming. It'll be here uh, this coming up Monday. Put a restock notification in on the website. I have a huge quantity of of them coming, hopefully it lasts. I feel like it should for quite some time. But yeah, the two $300 Tone Poet that everybody's been wanting for years is finally gonna be pressed in the store and it's going to be here in quantity. Repress of uh, Gets Gilberto. This is the 33 RPM Analog Productions version. Verve by Request series stuff. The first Tone Poet this is uh, Chick Corea, Now He Sings, Now He Sobs. My favorite jazz album of all time, and I'd put this at number one on the top ten jazz albums you should own. The record that got me into jazz, Art Blakey in the Jazz Messengers. Killer, killer record. All analog, sounds phenomenal. Judah Hip with Zoot Sims. This is another Blue Note classic title that has been awaiting repress for quite some time. So it seems like we are now caught up on Blue Note Classic Series and Tone Poets. If you want it now, pretty much uh, no more waiting. You can get it all. Let me show you guys the restock of analog production stuff. There's a lot of killer stuff in here. Again, stuff people have been waiting on for a long time. I'll do a quick rundown of the SACDs. Uh, got a small restock of Folk Singer, SACD or something else, SACD uh, Wonderful Sounds of Female Vocals, The Doors. Waiting for the Sun, A Love Supreme, Niles Lofferin, Acoustic Live, Gets Gilberto, this is a uh, say CD, and I already showed you that, and Muddy Waters Folk Singer. Okay, you can actually search by label on the website. If you go to the top, you can actually search by label, click Analog Productions, and you can narrow it down, everything that's in stock, you can see this all really easy, no problem. The big one, Bach, the Bach box, Jano Starker, Sweets for Unaccompanied Cello. This was some, uh, how was this thing, four, 500 bucks? I mean, this was going for insane money, a record that was nowhere near going out of press, but this is the one everybody wants. This is the 45 RPM Bach, uh, Jano Starker, Sweets for Unaccompanied Cello. I actually have an original of this on the website. I've had it for quite some time. But uh, yeah, I got an original uh, Mercury Living Presence of this. The most, I think this is the most expensive, most desirable Mercury Living Presence title. Originals are very difficult to find. Go for some bucks. That's why it's been on the website for a little while. Belafonte at Carnegie Hall. This is a five disc, 45 RPM. Okay, restock of Analog Productions Prestige titles, Cooking with the Miles Davis Quintet. These have been extremely popular since they've been back in print. Again, these were two, three, four hundred dollars when they went out of print, although the first time around very few people bought them. But they sound killer. They're all analog, cut by Kevin Gray from the Master Tape. Oliver Nelson, Screaming the Blues. All Morning Long, the Red Garland. Quintet. This has got Donald Byrd on it. John Coltrane. Red Garland's on piano. And, uh, I mean, that's Arthur Taylor drums. George Joyner on bass. Hank Mobley's Mobley's Second Message. Some of these have been reissued for the first time. You know, there was 50 titles originally. 25 Prestige Stereo, 25 Prestige Mono. But 
over the course of the last year, they've been getting all repressed. Some of these, I think, like this Booker Urban, I think has just recently been repressed. The Freedom Book. Same thing with uh, Out of the Forest, Jimmy Forrest. Steaming with the Miles Davis Quintet. The Miles Davis stuff. I mean, these are must-haves. Miles Davis, the Coltrane. Actually, all, if you're a jazz fan, these are all must-haves. There are no duds. in. The, there's a couple of blues albums, but out of all the jazz stuff, there are no duds in this uh, series. Gene Ammons, uh, nice and cool. These are all, you know, top, top-tier albums. Arnett Cobb's Party Time. Probably why they were picked. The tenor scene, Eddie Lockjaw Davis. Speaking of one of the blues albums, Lightning Hopkins, Soul Blues. Bags Groove, Miles Davis, Sonny Rollins, Percy Heath, Milt Jackson, fantastic record, Monk on the Piano. This is a restock of a title that I love. This is a fantastic sounding record. I'm not a female vocal fan either, but this is such a great record with a proper jazz band. Helen Merrill, an original of this is like $1,500, $2,000. They go for insane money. Uh, but I, like I said, I love this record. It's a fantastic listen. And this is coming from somebody who is not a fan of female vocals. I like some, but not many. One of my favorite records gets Gilberto the 45 RPM from Analog Productions. Uh, this is one of my demo records. Top five, get it in my system. I use it to evaluate every new piece of equipment into my system because I'm so familiar with it. I've heard it a zillion times. This is actually the other, one of the other five records from that, uh, you know, list of titles I use to examine gear. This is, uh, the Dave Brubeck Quartet's Time Out, but this is the 45 RPM Analog Productions. Uh, Time Out is a single side on it. I use it in the store for demos on gear. I use it at home when I get a new piece of gear in my system. It's an absolute must. Muddy Waters Folk Singer. This is the uh, 33 RPM version. More titles from the Prestige series. John Coltrane's Standard Coltrane. Oh, we had a Tone Poet restock, another big one that just kind of slid in here. This is uh, Grant Green's Nigeria. And Nina Simone's I Put a Spell on You. This is the uh, Verse Series stuff, so this isn't technically an Acoustic Sounds uh, title. Julie is her name. This is the 45 RPM version of uh, Volume 2. Miles Davis, Seven Steps to Heaven. Interestingly enough, there is a Mobile Fidelity Super Vinyl version of this on pre-order. So there's going to be two audio file versions of this in print. I'm sure people are going to have a fun time with... Uh, Capera and that one online. Seven Steps to Heaven, Miles Davis. This is, though, cut from the analog tape. Fantastic record. Herbie Hancock's Headhunters with the hit version of Watermelon Man. This is the 33 RPM. And I got some classical records, uh, re you know, some restocks of the uh, Analog Productions uh, Living Stereo series. Mahler Symphony Number no. 4. Jeff Beck, Blow by Blow. This is the 45 RPM version. Jimmy Witherspoon's Roots. Ben Webster's on that. Ricky Lee Jones. Two LP. What's the name of this? It's like this. Like I said, I'm not a huge female vocal fan, so... Another uh, analog, per, uh, excuse me, the Prestige series, uh, Boss Tenor by Gene Ammons. Julie is her name. This is the 45 RPM of Volume 1. Julian Bream. Guitar Concerto. Prokryoff. This is a Stravinsky Song of the Nightingale, Reiner's Chicago Symphony. One of the very few and very expensive classic, re classical records on Capitol. That is uh, Nathan Milstein's Masterpieces. Actually, Nathan Milstein, I think he was probably signed to Capitol. But all the Nathan Milstein stuff in the U.S. I think came out on Capitol. And it's all actually quite desirable. 
Freddie King's uh, getting ready. And like an absolute must for anybody who listens to music. Richard Strauss is also Sprock Zarahustra. Uh, fantastic. You know, if you're a classical fan, you're familiar with it. If you're a movie, sci-fi, Elvis opened up all his concerts with it. Uh, yeah, and it's also a fantastic recording and a fantastic uh, presentation of that. I mean, one of the most expensive and more difficult to find RCA Living stereos. Still very in demand. The French Touch. And last, this is an interesting one. I don't want to describe this. Most people aren't familiar with this, but this is one of those audiophile demo discs and has been going back to maybe the 50s, the early 60s. I actually got a book that they used to give out with a console purchase. You could pick classical music or you could pick popular music. And I want to say this one was in the popular music, but it was essentially a book of demo discs. And they gave it out when I think you bought this console. It was the demo stereo. This is one of the discs that's in this. So this is a demo disc going back decades and decades and decades ago, and it's still a demo disc now. It is one of the absolute best recording stereo discs you will ever listen to in your life. It is uh, music for bang, broom, and harp. Dick Shorty's new percussion ensemble. It's fun. It's a fun listen. It definitely will flatter your system. I got to tell you that. But it's, uh, I think it's a must-have. It's so good. I play it in the store. It's a fun, you know, it's like, uh, it's like fun for your ears is the way I'll describe it. Stop coddling your hi-fi set. An approximate instrument inventory. There's like 50 instruments on this record. It's a fun record. But yeah, music for Bang, Broom, and Harp. Kind of a classic audiophile staple right there. All right, guys, that is it for uh, this week's very large new arrival video. Check us out online at theingroup.com. Until next time, AC's working again. It's nice and cold in here.